A mod short for modification is an alteration by players or fans of a video game that changes one or more aspects of a video game, such as how it looks or behaves. Mods may range from small changes and tweaks to complete overhauls, and can extend the replay value and interest of the game. Modding a game can also be understood as the act of seeking and installing mods to the player's game, but the act of tweaking pre existing settings and preferences is not truly modding. Mods have arguably become an increasingly important factor in the commercial success of some games, as they add a depth to the original work, and can be both useful to players and a means of self expression. People can become fans of specific mods, in addition to fans of the game they are for, such as requesting features and alterations for these mods. In cases where mods are very popular, players might have to clarify that they are referring to the unmodified game when talking about playing a game. The term vanilla is often used to make this distinction. Vanilla Battlefield 1942, for example, refers to the original, unmodified game. As early as the 1980s, video game mods have also been used for the sole purpose of creating art, as opposed to an actual game. This can include recording in-game actions as a film, as well as attempting to reproduce real-life areas inside a game with no regard for gameplay value. This has led to the rise of artistic video game modification, as well as machinima and the demoscene. Popular games can have tens of thousands of mods created for them. Popular websites dedicated to modding include Nexus Mods, GameBanana, ModDB, and Steam Workshop. Development Many mods are not publicly released to the gaming community by their creators. Some are very limited and just include some gameplay changes or even a different loading screen, while others are total conversions and can modify content and gameplay extensively. A few mods become very popular and convert themselves into distinct games, with the rights getting bought and turning into an official modification. Technical and social skills are needed to create a mod. A group of mod developers may join together to form a mod team. Doom 1993 was the first game to have a large modding community. In exchange for the technical foundation to mod, id Software insisted that mods should only work with the retail version of the game, not the demo, which was respected by the modders and boosted Doom's sales. Another factor in the popularity of modding Doom was the increasing popularity of the Internet, which allowed modding communities to form. Mods for Quake 1996, such as, "'Capture the Flag' and "'Team Fortress' became standard features in later games in the shooter genre. While first-person shooters are popular games to mod, the virtual pet genre with games such as Pets 1995 and Creatures 1996 fostered younger modders, particularly girls. Tools Mod making tools are a variety of construction sets for creating mods for a game. Early commercial mod making tools were the Boulder Dash Construction Kit and the Bard's Tail Construction Set which allowed users to create game designs in those series. Much more successful among early mod making tools was the 1992 Forgotten Realms, Unlimited Adventures from Strategic Simulations, Inc., which allowed users to construct games based on the game world that was launched with the Pool of Radiance game. By the mid 1990s, modding tools were commonly offered with PC games, and by the early 2000s, a game that launched with no modding tools was considered more worthy of note in a review than one that did. Maxis released the modding tools for The Sims 2000 before the game itself, resulting in a suite of fan-created mods being available at launch. The advertising campaign for Neverwinter Nights 2002 focused on the included Aurora toolset. The provision of tools is still seen as the most practical way that a company can signal to fans that its game is open for modding. Fans may also use and create open source software tools for modding games. There are also free content delivery tools available that make playing mods easier. They help manage downloads, updates, and mod installation in order to allow people who are less technically literate to play. Steam for Half-Life 2 mods is an example. Topic: <laughs> Game support for modifications. The potential for end-user change in-game varies greatly, though it can have little correlation on the number and quality of mods made for a game. 
In general the most modification-friendly games will define gameplay variables in text or other non-proprietary format files for instance in the Civilization series one could alter the movement rate along roads and many other factors, and have graphics of a standard format such as bitmaps. Publishers can also determine mod friendliness in the way important source files are available, such as Doom having its art assets separate from the main program, which allowed them to be shared and modified. Games have varying support from their publishers for modifications, but often require expensive professional software to make. One such example is Homeworld 2, which requires the program Maya to build new in game objects. However, there are free versions of Maya and other advanced modeling software available. There are also free and even open source modeling programs such as Blender that can be used as well. For advanced mods such as Desert Combat that are total conversions, complicated modeling and texturing software is required to make original content. Advanced mods can rival the complexity and work of making the original game content short of the engine itself, rendering the differences in ease of modding small in comparison to the total amount of work required. Having an engine that is for example easy to import models to, is of little help when doing research, modeling, and making a photorealistic texture for a game item. As a result, other game characteristics such as its popularity and capabilities have a dominating effect on the number of mods created for the game by users. A game that allows modding is said to be, moddable. The Elder Scrolls V, Skyrim as well as its predecessors, The Elder Scrolls III, Morrowind and The Elder Scrolls IV, Oblivion, are examples of highly moddable games, with an official editor available for download from the developer. Daggerfall was much less moddable, but some people released their own modifications nevertheless. Some modifications such as Gunslinger's Academy have deliberately made the game more moddable by adding in scripting support or externalizing underlying code. Supreme Commander set out to be the most customizable game ever and as such included a mod manager which allowed for modular modding, having several mods on at once. The game's industry is currently facing the question of how much it should embrace the player's contribution in creating new material for the game or mod communities as part of their structure within the game. Some software companies openly accept and even encourage such communities. Others though have chosen to enclose their games in heavily policed copyright or intellectual property regimes and close down sites that they see as infringing their ownership of a game. Portability issues For cross-platform games, mods written for the Windows version have not always been compatible with the Mac OS X and or Linux ports of the game. In large part, this is due to the publisher's concern with prioritizing the porting of the primary game itself, when allocating resources for fixing the porting of mod-specific functions may not be cost-effective for the smaller market share of alternate platforms. For example, Battlefield 1942, ported by Aspire for Mac OS X, had file access issues specific to mods until the 1.61D patch. Unreal Tournament 2004 does not have a working community mods menu for the Mac OS X version and, until the 3369 patch, had graphics incompatibilities with several mods such as Red Orchestra and Metaball. Also, mods compiled into platform-specific libraries, such as those of Doom 3, are often only built for the Windows platform, leading to a lack of cross-platform compatibility even when the underlying game is highly portable. In the same line of reasoning, mod development tools are often available only on the Windows platform. ID Software's Doom 3 Radiant Tool and Epic Games Unreal are examples of this. Mod teams that lack either the resources or know how to develop their mods for alternate platforms sometimes outsource their code and art assets to individuals or groups who are able to port the mod. The mod specialist site for Max, Macologist, has created GUI launchers and installers for many UT2004 mods, as well as solving cross-platform conversion issues for mods for other games. <laughs> Unforeseen consequences or benefits of modding In January 2005, it was reported that in The Sims 2 2004 modifications that changed item and game behavior were unexpectedly being transferred to other players through the official website's exchange feature, leading to changed game behavior without advance warning. After the Hot Coffee mod incident, there were calls from the industry to better control modders. 
There is concern about mods which show nudity, and Bestdata does not allow mods with nudity to be uploaded on its website. Nexus allows for mods which allow nudity if breasts are not visible in the preview image. One of the most popular mods of this type is Caliente's Beautiful Bodies Edition, which allows for body modification in Skyrim and Fallout 4, and has been downloaded at least 8.2 million times. In 2015, members from the Grand Theft Auto fan site GTA forums reported instances of malware being circulated through modifications written using the .NET framework for Grand Theft Auto 5. Two of the modifications in question, namely "Angry Planes" and "No Clip." came with code for loading a remote access tool, and a keylogger for stealing Facebook and Steam account credentials. The modifications in question have since been taken out of circulation, with affected players being advised to change their social media account passwords and disinfect their computers. Motivations of modders The Internet provides an inexpensive medium to promote and distribute user-created content like mods, an aspect commonly known as Web 2.0. Video game modding was described as remixing of games and can be therefore seen as part of the remix culture as described by Lawrence Lessig, or as a successor to the playful hacker culture which produced the first video games. Mods can be both useful to players and a means of self-expression. Three motivations have been identified by Oli for fans to create mods, to patch the game, to express themselves, and to get a foot in the door of the video game industry. However, it is very rare for even popular modders to make this leap to the professional video game industry. Poor suggests becoming a professional is not a major motivation of modders, noting that they tend to have a strong sense of community, and that older modders, who may already have established careers, are less motivated by the possibility of becoming professional than younger modders. Official status of mods Mods can extend the shelf life of games, such as Half-Life which increased its sales figures over the first three years of its release. According to the director of marketing at Valve, a typical shelf life for a game would be 12 to 18 months, even if it was a «mega hit». In early 2012, the day's modification for Arma 2 was released and caused a massive increase in sales for the three-year-old game, putting it in the top spot for online game sales for a number of months and selling over 300,000 units for the game. In some cases, modders who are against piracy have created mods that enforce the use of a legal game copy. Half-Life had a Valve-run annual mod expo which began in 1999, showcasing the new games built using the Half-Life engine. Due to the increasing popularity and quality of modding, some developers, such as Firaxis, have included fan-made mods in official releases of expansion packs. A similar case is that of Valve Corporation, when they hired Defense of the Ancients lead designer Icefrog in developing Dota 2. For example, in the Civilization IV expansion Beyond the Sword, two existing mods, Rise and Fall of Civilization and Fall from Heaven made their way into the expansion the latter through a spin-off called Age of Ice. A number of fan-made maps, scenarios and mods, such as, "'Double Your Pleasure' were also included in the Civilization 3 expansion, Play the World. <laughs> Legal status of mods Copyright law, as it relates to video games and mod packs, is an evolving and largely unsettled legal issue. The legal uncertainty revolves around which party is legally the copyright owner of the mods within the pack, the company that produced the game, the end user that created the compilation, or the creators of the individual mods. Video games are protected by copyright law as a literary work. In the United States context, the mechanisms of how the modder gets into the code of the game to mod it may violate the Digital Millennium Copyright Act or the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act or even simply the End User License Agreement. Most EULAs forbid modders from selling their mods. A particular concern of companies is the use of copyrighted material by another company in mods, such as a Quake, Aliens vs. Predator mod, which was legally contested by 20th Century Fox. Some regard the fan use of copyrighted material in mods to be part of a moral economy and develop norms about the reuse of this material, often settling on a system of shared ownership, where mods and code are freely shared with the common good in mind. 
It has been argued that total conversion mods may be covered in the United States under the concept of fair use. Modding can be compared with the open source software movement. Topic: <laughs> Controversy surrounding paid mods. In April 2015, Valve Corporation implemented a paid mod feature onto Steam. The first game to implement this feature was The Elder Scrolls V, Skyrim. The move resulted in a swift backlash from the modding community, and after an enormous influx of complaints of overpriced mods, content that had been published without its creator's consent, and concerns over mods that contained third-party copyrighted content i.e., material that neither Valve nor the mod creator owned, Valve discontinued the paid mod feature entirely and agreed to refund those that spent money to purchase a mod. Other concerns identified included that being able to mod the game was a reason why players bought the game on PC in the first place, and a worry that newbie modders would not be able to stand on the shoulders of giants by modding pre-existing mods, and that mod teams would become unworkable. The removal of the system itself was also criticized. <laughs> Types Total conversion A total conversion is a mod of an existing game that replaces virtually all of the artistic assets in the original game, and sometimes core aspects of gameplay. Total conversions can result in a completely different genre from the original. The Half-Life modding community splintered across the different total conversions available, often modding for a particular total conversion rather than Half-Life in general. Examples of famous total conversions include Counter-Strike whose developers were hired by Valve Software to turn it into a commercial product, Defense of the Ancients 2003, which was the first MOBA to have sponsored tournaments, and Gary's Mod 2004, for which fans created thousands of game modes over its decade-long development. Many popular total conversions are later turned into standalone games, replacing any remaining original assets to allow for commercial sale without copyright infringement. Some of these mods are even approved for sale despite using the IP of the original game, such as Black Mesa. Overhaul An overhaul mod significantly changes an entire game's graphics and gameplay, usually with the intent to improve on the original, but not going as far as a complete remake. This can also include adding revised dialogue and music. Examples of overhaul mods include Deus Ex, Revision, which was given permission from publisher Square Enix to release on Steam alongside the original game, and GTA V Redux, which not only improves the original game's textures, but also adds a new weather system, visual effects, and adjusts the wanted system, weapons, and vehicle handling. Add-on An add-on or add-on is a typically small mod which adds to the original content of a specific game. In most cases, an add-on will add one particular element to a game, such as a new weapon in a shooting game, a new unit or map in a strategy game, a new vehicle or track in a racing game, items in a game like Minecraft, or additional contents in simulation games such as new pilotable airplanes e.g., the Airbus A330 or Boeing 787 Dreamliner and scenery packs for Microsoft Flight Simulator X. This can be accomplished without changing any of the original game's existing content. Many games are flexible and allow this, however that is not always the case. Some add-ons occasionally have to replace in-game content, due to the nature of a peculiar game engine. It may be the case, for example, that in a game which does not give a player the option to choose their character, modders wishing to add another player model will simply have to overwrite the old one. A famous example of this type of mod can be found for the Grand Theft Auto series wherein modders may use downloadable tools to replace content such as models in the game's directory. The Left 4 Dead series can also be modded with individual add-ons which are stored in a .vpk format, so that a player may choose to activate a given mod or not. Unofficial patch 
An unofficial patch can be a mod of an existing game that fixes bugs not fixed by an official patch or that unlocks content present in the released game's files but is inaccessible in official gameplay. Such patches are usually created by members of the game's fan base when the original developer is unwilling or unable to supply the functionality officially. Jazz Jackrabbit 2 has an unofficial patch which adds and fixes many of its features. One downside of this type of mod is that leaked content can be revealed. An example is the Hot Coffee mod for Grand Theft Auto, San Andreas, which unlocks a sexually explicit minigame. The ESRB changed the rating of GTA, Saw from Mature M to Adults Only OW. In the fourth quarter of 2005, Rockstar released a «clean» version of the game with the «hot coffee» scenes removed Grand Theft Auto, San Andreas 1.01, allowing the rating of the game to be reverted to its original Mature rating. In May 2006, a similar event occurred with Elder Scrolls IV, Oblivion. Art mod An art mod is a mod that is created for artistic effect. Art mods are most frequently associated with video game art, however modified games that retain their playability and are subject to more extensive mods i.e. closer to total conversions may also be classified as art games. Art mods are usually designed to subvert the original game experience. One example is the Velvet Strike mod for Counter-Strike in which the players spray paint anti-violence messages in multiplayer games as a form of performance art. Another example is Robert Niedeffer's Tomb Raider I and two patches which were designed to subvert the unofficial nude raider patch of the late 1990s by altering Lara Croft's sexual orientation. The origins of the art mod can be traced to the classic 1983 mod Castle Smurfenstein, a humorous subversion of Castle Wolfenstein which replaces the Nazi guards with Smurfs. The very first art mod, however, is generally considered to be Iimura Takahiko's 1993 AIUEOUNN6 features, a modification of Sony's System G. Topic Support continuation by mod After EA lost the license and ended the support for the MVP Baseball 2005, the game's modding community continues the support and releases updated roster lists every year as also alternative leagues e.g. MVP Carib, a total conversion, released 2011 IL-2 Sturmovic, Cliffs of Dover received mixed reviews due to bugs and other issues. Modders fixed the game over time, got source code access granted, which lead to an official re-release under the name IL-2 Sturmovic, Cliffs of Dover Blitz Edition. <laughs> User interface mod A user interface mod changes parts of how players interact with the game, and commonly, mods to the UI reveal information that the player or modder believes is helpful in playing the game. Mod packs Mod packs are groups of mods put into one package for download, often with an auto-installer. A mod pack's purpose is to make an easy download for downloading multiple mods, often with the goal of resolving cross-mod interactions that can happen, or to make the original game easier or more difficult. See also Adventure Construction Set, one of the earliest games for which user-created content was widely made and distributed. Cartridge tilting which modifies a game with often unpredictable effects Creative consumer Fan labor Fork software development. House rule Level editor Modding Modding in Grand Theft Auto, for more information on the GTA modding scene Nexus mods ROM hacking Steam Workshop Texture Artist